Hey, if you're rated 1400 or below and can't seem to get past that level, in this video, I'm gonna share with you the top six reasons why players are stuck at 1400 and give you some tips on what you can do to fix that and get past 1400 to 1500, 1600 and beyond. This is the fifth video in a series. I started on how to get past 600 and then we went to 800, 1000, 1200 and now obviously 1400. If you are a little bit lower rated, you might wanna check out those first. The playlist will be in the description below. But for everyone else, Let's jump right in. All right, so like I usually do for these videos, I analyzed 100 games from players rated right around 1400, and I added a row in my spreadsheet for each game that I analyzed where I wrote down what the mistake was that, that cost them the game. You can see here, I have my 100 games, and then I just summarized those results in this table over here. And you can see that the majority of the mistakes that players are making fall under these top two tactics mistakes and blunders. And I've talked about this in a previous video, but blunders are different from tactics mistakes. The main difference is that blunders are just obvious mistakes where you just give away pieces for free. Like you move your bishop somewhere and it gets captured. A tactics mistake is slightly different. Let me show you an example. All right, so this is a position from one of my games from a long time ago. I was about 10 or 11 at the time and I played bishop to h7 check, and my opponent played king to h8. Now at this point, I thought I had a really clever move. I played bishop to g8, and my idea was that if he captures me with his rook, I'm gonna take on f7, checkmate, because my queen covers h7, and if he takes it with his knight, I'm gonna play queen h7, checkmate, because now the knight you know, no longer defends the h7 square. So I thought that was a really brilliant move by playing bishop to g8. Well, it turns out that he could just take it with his king and I have nothing and I just gave away my bishop for free. So that's an example of a tactics mistake. I was calculating some tactics like, okay, if he takes this way, I'm gonna do this. And if he takes this way, I'm gonna do this. I just failed to consider the fact that he could just take with the king, right? So that's an example of what I mean when I say tactics mistakes. So I wanna give you two tips on how you can avoid making so many tactics mistakes. Number one is practice, practice, practice. You have to practice a lot of tactics puzzles so that your brain gets used to seeing those types of positions. So in this example that I just showed you, whenever I get into a position like this, I know that if I'm gonna move a piece like this next to a king, I have to consider the fact, can he just take it with his king? That was something that I didn't really think about before, but now that I've seen this and I've fallen for this mistake, I know to consider it. That's what you have to do with tactics. You have to practice enough in a lot of different situations so your brain can pick up on those things. All right, and for my second tip, I wanna show you an example. So this is one of the games that I looked at when I was analyzing these 100 games. And this was the position. Black had just captured this pawn on e4 and white played queen to f3 check and he's forking the king and the knight. And so whoever was playing black decided that, all right, I gotta get my king to safety. I gotta go either here or here. And he moved king to e8 simply giving up his knight. But if we go back, there's a much better move. Go ahead and take five seconds if you want. See if you can see it for black. Yeah, if you said knight of six, you're correct. So he doesn't have to lose the knight just because it's a fork. He can block the check and save the knight at the same time. So this is tip number two when it comes to tactics mistakes. All right, so when you're looking at a position, the first move that comes to mind, like king e8 in this example, might not be the best move. In fact, if you're rated 1400, most of the time that you consider a move, there's probably a better option. So just remind yourself that, hey, just because I think this is the only move I have, there's probably a better one somewhere. Let me look again. And I think if you do that, you might find ways out of situations that you didn't realize were there before, like in this case, knight f6. All right, so next on the list, we have blunders with 35% of the games being decided by blunders. All right, so the tip I have for not blundering is you have to do a blunder check. I talked about this on my last video, but it's really, really important. All right, so let me show you another example from a game that I analyzed. Black was 1400, and in this position, white played e4, and black captured the pawn, just losing his knight for free. Okay, so he clearly was not doing a blunder check, or he would have saw that. So blunder check, once you're ready to make your move, before you move it, you have to stop and ask yourself four things. Number one, is my king gonna be in danger if I do this? No, not in this case. Is my queen gonna be in danger if I do this? Not in this case. The next thing you have to ask, 
if I do this, is the piece that I'm moving going to be in danger? Well, yeah, it's going to just get captured by the knight. So he should have saw that and not played the move. And then the fourth thing is, what was your opponent's most recent move? In this case, it was e4. Does that do anything to threaten you? Like you would check here and you would check here and maybe notice that. But he would have seen that, oh yeah, I, I can't do that because the knight, if he did a blunder check. So that's very, very important. If you want to get past 1400, you cannot make blunders like this and expect to, to get past that level. It's just not going to happen. All right, next on the list, we have forks and discovered attacks. Now, both of these are actually a type of tactics mistake, but they happened enough uh, that I wanted to separate them out as their own category, just so I can show you examples of those and talk about those specifically. So, all right, so for the tip on how to prevent forks, I'm gonna show you this position. Most of the time that the forks happened in the positions that I saw were from pawns being pushed forward or from knights. So in this example, a lot of players would play something like knight f3, just going about their normal developing, and then bam, d4 happens and they lose a piece. Okay, so my tip would have to be pay attention, especially to the central pawns, and make sure you're considering what happens if they're pushed forward. Because it's a very simple and easy way to get forked if you're not paying attention. Okay, this happens a lot. So watch out for that. And then secondly, the knights, because of the way they move, jumping over pieces and the L shape is, is kind of weird, even higher rated players are more likely to fall for a fork that's with a knight than with any other piece. So just do your best to pay attention to knights. There's a good chance that you'll, you'll see more forks if you, if you watch out for knights. All right, next on the list, coming in at 7%, is what are called discovered attacks. So let me explain what that is in case anyone watching doesn't know. All right, this is a position from one of the games that I analyzed. White was 1400, and he actually fell victim to a discovered attack. But I want to show you the position from Black's perspective just so you can see what it looks like when you're the player getting the discovered attack. So White captured this pawn on d5, and Black played queen takes d5. Now, White should have probably traded queens to prevent the discovered attack. He did not do that, played queen to c2. So a discovered attack is when you move one piece out of the way and it uncovers another long range piece that is attacking a piece. So in, in this example, if black moves this knight somewhere, let's say knight c5, it unblocks this queen, which is then attacking the rook on h1. So that's a discovered attack. Now in this game, black didn't take advantage of it right away. He played bishop b4 check first, but after a couple of captures, you can see now when he recaptured, he created this discovered attack and at white ended up losing the rook and the game. Okay, here's one more example from another game that I looked at. White is currently putting black in check, so black escapes by going to g6, and now white has a winning move, which is a discovered attack. Go ahead and see if you can find it. I'll give you five seconds to do that. All right, if you found bishop e4 check, congratulations, that's the move, that's what was played, and because it puts black in check and also creates the discovered attack on the queen, black is forced to lose his queen, and that's what happened. So I hope you can see how powerful these discovered attacks and discovered checks can really be. All right, so the final example of a discovered attack in this position, this was another game that I analyzed. White played e3. This was a losing move. See if you can find why. What did black play? All right, if you said knight to e4, you are correct. There's actually a lot happening in this position. But first of all, by playing knight to e4, black creates a discovered attack on the knight on c3. He's also threatening white's queen on d2 and the knight and the bishop, so there's a fork. And then another part of the equation is there's a pin on this knight, so that if the knight moves, the rook on a1 is going to get captured. And so white really doesn't have any good options. He has to do something about his queen, so by capturing the knight, probably the best option, but then he still loses the rook because of the pin. But you can see how all of that was made possible by this discovered attack from the bishop when the knight moved. All right, so here's my tip for discovered attacks. First of all, they can only happen with queens, rooks, and bishops, okay? So what I like to do is look at the long range pieces and pretend like all of the squares on their diagonal or file are open. For example, what if I just pretended like all these were open? What would happen? Well, my knight would be in danger. What if this was open? Well, my rook would be in danger. So I'm just pretending that these pieces are kind of gone and then, oh, I can see that, okay, the bishop would be hitting some important things. Another example, what about this rook? Well, I'm just going to pretend like all these pieces are gone, and I see that, okay, my king would be in check. Now, in this case, 
these pawns aren't going to go anywhere right away, so I'm not super worried about that. But in this case, there's only really one piece that has to get out of the way, and then the bishop is going to be active. So I'm concerned about that. One more example. If I check this bishop, what if all these were gone? He could take my bishop. I'm not really super concerned about that. And also, this pawn is not going to be able to just disappear right away. So that's not as big of a deal. But I hope you can see the process. You want to check the diagonals that the long range pieces are on and just ask yourself if they were all open, what would happen? And that should get you thinking ahead so that hopefully you can plan for these kind of situations. So in this case, white would have been much better to play rook c1 defending the knight in preparation for some sort of discovered attack on his knight. And now if black tries to play knight e4, well, white just captured it, right? Because he got out of the pin as, as well. All right, next up we had time trouble. So games that people either lost on time or they just started making really bad moves because they didn't have enough time left to actually think about the position. All right, so tips that I have for dealing with time trouble. Number one, if possible, play longer time controls. Um, if you can do that, that's probably an easy solution. If that's not an option, the next thing that I would say is try to use your time at the most beneficial point in the game. So what, I, what do I mean by that? Suppose I play e4, e5, knight of three, and my opponent plays bishop to d6. This is kind of a weird move. It's not very good. You don't want to block your bishop in like this, and it's it's... It's not a good diagonal for the bishop, but it's not immediately losing. There's nothing that I can play that's going to just lead to a crushing attack or, or a checkmate right away. So I shouldn't spend five minutes sitting here thinking about, okay, how do I make black pay for, for this bad move? I should just play a normal move. Just play knight c3 or, or play bishop c4, whatever I want to do. Don't think a lot here. Even though it's a weird move, you shouldn't be spending a ton of time on a situation like this. But here's another situation. Let's say I play e4, e5, and we enter into a two knights defense. And I play knight g5, and my opponent plays the Traxler, bishop c5. I take it, and he takes on f2. Now, this is a position where I absolutely would spend a lot of time thinking about because there is a lot of stuff happening here. There's a fork on his queen and rook, but my king's under attack. I have the option to take, but then I let the knight in, which also lets his queen out with check could be pretty risky. Maybe I want to play king f1 instead and, and just keep the, the pressure with my fork. There's a lot going on. This is a perfect situation when you would want to spend a significant portion of your time because the game could really be over in a couple moves if, you know, if, if you're not careful. So hopefully you can tell the difference between a position like this where there's a lot happening and the one I showed you previously, there's still not much going on. His king's not in danger. My king's not in danger. It's just a random move. Yeah, it's not probably not very good and it's kind of weird. But don't spend a ton of time on that. Spend your time on positions like this where it really matters that you play accurate moves. All right, so last on the list, 5% of the games, people were falling for opening tricks and traps. This is not something that everyone likes to do, but some people go for it, and it actually works sometimes. You've been bamboozled! Yeah! I have another series on my channel called High Probability Opening Traps where I kind of go through lots of different traps that lots of people have fallen for so i'll link that down in the description below if you're interested in checking that out some of those are pretty good to know and actually the example that i'm going to show you now one of the games that i analyzed for this video is one that i previously done a trap on so let's check that one out right now all right so both of these players are 1400 and this is what happened e5 sacrificing the pawn the whole point of this is so that you can build pressure on the e5 pawn like black did here and when white tries to defend it Black plays queen to b4, setting up this triple fork. Now, it turns out this is not good for black, but it's tricky, and if white doesn't know the correct move, he can get into trouble, which is exactly what happened in this game. So, black played bishop b4, white retreated with the bishop, and then played bishop c3, which kind of looks like it could be a good move because it's trying to defend the rook and attack the queen with tempo. The problem is after bishop b4, which is what this person played, now the bishop is pinned, and white's kind of in trouble. This guy decided to go king d2, which is a really bad option. But anyway, uh, queen took the rook. Again, the bishop is still pinned. So it you know, can't take the queen. And then after this happened, it was just not good for, for white. But if I go back, this position right here, when white played bishop to c3, that's losing. But knight to c3 is actually the winning move. And if you want to see how that works, 
I'll post the link and put it in the card above. I did a video talking about this trap in more detail. Go check that out if you're interested. But now the one thing I'll say about opening traps is they're hard to prepare for because they are pretty tricky. And so if you haven't seen the correct move, it might be hard to find it in an actual game. But the best thing that you can do is even if you fall for a trap, make sure that you analyze the game afterwards and make a mental note so that you don't fall for it again. And also, I guess go check out my playlist on you know all the other opening traps. Go ahead and watch that and you'll be aware of some of them from that. Um, all right, so those were the top mistakes. And there's one other thing that I wanna show you and I wrote it kind of off to the side over here. Up a queen and up a queen or more and still lost 5%. So five games out of the 100 that I analyzed, players were winning by at least a queen and they still lost the game. So let me just show you one final game. All right, so both of these players were 14, 1500, and watch what happened. So black falls for this opening trick, pretty common, but he didn't know it, obviously. Not only did he lose a rook, he lost his knight, he lost a pawn, he lost another pawn, he lost another pawn, and by the way, his king is on a run to the center of the board. And at this point, I was looking at the game, and I couldn't believe it because I knew that black won the game, but looking at it, it's like, how, how did black win the game? I mean, I'm, I, I I have no words. I have no words. And then I saw this move, and I'm like, okay, well, now I see. <laughs> so he just gave up his queen. Didn't see the bishop, I guess. I don't know. And then check out what happened next. The king goes all the way to d3, to e2, and e1. And then we have queen f1 checkmate. Um, but the moral of the story is you never know what might happen. Like in this case, things can turn around. Crazy stuff can happen in chess games. So at 1400, I wouldn't quit. I would keep playing until, until the end and see what happens. All right, well, hey, that's all the tips I have for this video. Make sure you follow those, and I think you'll have a good chance of getting past 1400. Make sure to stay on the lookout for my next video where I'm gonna talk about how to get past 1600. Stay sharp, play smart, and take care.